So first of all, thank you very, very much for coming and joining us. I think this is kind of a special day for the faculty. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Uh, as most of you know, we've uh, looked from the very beginning as we've talked about our new facility to have an area that really will invite the community in, that will really talk about medicines, we'll talk about drugs, we'll talk about innovation, we'll talk about discovery, we'll talk about all of those things that touch the life of a drug, which really is the things that the faculty does across the entire uh, breadth of our activities with that. As such, what we wanted to do is the consultants that are working with us around building the building and these, this piece, we're going to come and make a presentation to the faculty. As such, we thought instead of just doing it as a presentation to the faculty, we'd like to have our, C our Center for Drug Research and Development colleagues come join us, and they're an integral part of our building. And we thought we'd also like to have a number of our stakeholders that have been nothing but gracious in, in supporting us as we move forward with a number of these initiatives. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about something that we call the story of medicines. And what I want to do is I want to take a moment, if I might, and I want to talk to all of you that are part of the faculty, and all of you that are part of pharmaceutical sciences and CDRD, and think about it a little bit. Think about those things that excite you in the profession that we've chosen, the career path we've chosen. If I think about it now, and I'm embarrassed to say almost 30 years of pharmacy education, and all those neat stories, all those things I learned along the way, and I got so excited because I wanted to tell other people about it. Think about that a little bit, okay? And then think a little bit about the way most average people learn about medicines. They learn about them from their healthcare provider, pharmacist, physician, what they read on the internet, and there's potentially issues, you know, what's always right or what's wrong on the internet. Think about what we read in the paper about medicines. I would say that 98% of everything I read in the paper is either about the miracle that has just been discovered and all of us wait for that now to make a difference in our lives. And a lot of times we never hear about it again. Or we hear about something that is less favorable and how horrible something is. But you know, that's not what medicines are and that's not what that life of the drug is about. So I go back and say to you, think about those things you were excited about that brought you into our faculty, brought you into part of CDRD brought you into the pharmaceutical sciences, brought you into the business that we're involved with. And think about how a faculty such as the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences can tell the story of us, but can tell the story of that in a fair and balanced way. And that's really the story of medicines and where it came from. The funny thing about it is when we started talking about this concept of maybe having a new facility, and back in 2004 and 2005, and I go around and talk to people about it. The interesting thing is it didn't matter what stakeholder group, and we have such a diverse stakeholder group that the faculty is blessed to work with. But with so many different, uh, different uh, contexts and, and even, even, even different purposes that the stakeholder groups had, one of the things that everyone said was, you know, the average individual just doesn't really understand this. And what people would say is, and they don't necessarily understand what we bring to that. <coughs> well, isn't that a perfect role for a university and something like the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences? So from the very beginning, this has always been a part of it. What I will say is the ideas have evolved because of all the good ideas that we have from a group. So what we'd like to do is go ahead and tell you about this as we present it in many cases to the faculty for the first time and take a look at it. I think you'll be excited about it. For what it's worth, I've been involved with this for quite a while, and I'm excited about it every time I see any of this and go to the meetings. Uh, we have here today a number of special people uh, that I'd like to mention. First of all, we have Gemma Radish and, uh, from Smart Design and Jessica, Jessica Doyne uh, from uh, NGX and her colleague Thomas Hepburn. Uh, Gemma and Jessica, would you stand? Because you're going to really be the principals that will do the presentation today. They're part of the group that's working with us on the story of medicines, and we appreciate that very much. We actually have Bill Lerwick here. Bill, where you at? There was one of our architects of the project. Okay. And then you're going to find a group that's uh, part of the committee that's been working on that, and it's quite a large committee, and all of them have a name tag and a little ask me button. So after the presentations, by all means, engage them, talk to them. We have on the committee 
we have uh, uh, myself, we have Jun Chow, who is involved with donor recognition. We have Raman uh, Dhaliwal, who is an entry to practice student and also is involved with the Pledge of Professionalism and how that will go in and the signage in the building. Uh, Pavan uh, Dillon, the young alumni. Uh, Jimmy Galvio is working on the Impact Media Wall, donor recognition, overall branding, and signage and wayfinding. Uh, Barry G. from the Center for Drug Research and Development is working with us on the life of a drug and the Impact Media Wall. Part of the committee, David Grierson. Uh, Janice Horn on donor recognition and origins and evolutions of the profession and of medicines. Uh, Tamiz Kanji on the role of pharmacy. Uh, Mark uh, Kunsley, a young alumni, and is working around some of the alumni pieces in general overall within the committee. Jamal Kurtu, uh, the alumni digital yearbook and signage and wayfinding. Kathleen McLeod, working with the journey of a drug. Ardi uh, Maharaj, the alumni digital yearbook and donor recognition. Nick Mayle uh, from UBC Properties Trust is working with signage and wayfinding. Brian Rodriguez is working with the life of a drug and six drugs that change the world. Uh, Jaya Kumar uh, Surindrados, a graduate student representative working around the graduate student pieces, and Arun uh, Verma is working with the role of pharmacy. So we have a very big group. And then we have a group of stakeholders here, and we want to thank you. What I don't want to do is take any more time, but hopefully I've set the stage. And now what we're going to do is start to look at is what is the story of medicine going to look like? And it's pretty cool, isn't it? So if you take it away. between nature and science and that's been a really exciting concept for us to work with for story of medicines we definitely want the feeling from the story of medicines features to tie into the feeling of the building and um, working with that uh, idea of the connection between nature and science has been really great within the first floor space of the building um, the design concept there is really more about um, the roots of the tree that ground the space and the main public space as you enter the building. So for us, our design concept has been really taking a, a parallel between the life force of the tree and the root systems and the life force of a body with the, uh, the veins and arteries and neurons, all of the body's systems that help support it uh, in a similar way to the roots do with the tree system. So with that idea in mind, we've developed some exciting design features to tell the story of medicines, um, keeping with that overall concept and really bringing the focus into health and vitality and uh, wellness. So I think uh, we can show the, the next one here in the zone plan. So um, this is a, an overall plan of the first floor space within the new building. And you can see we've identified some key zones we're gonna talk about today. Um, the first one being an origins and evolutions exhibit. The second being donor recognition pieces, an impact video wall deep within the atrium, and in the mezzanine, an entire interactive zone. So we're gonna walk you through each of these zones here and tell you a little bit more about um, what we've been planning together with the faculty. So as you walk into the building, the, the first thing you're going to see is in that lobby space. And for this space, what we've been planning is an exhibit that has a feel more of um, an art gallery sort of feel, museum type of quality within that space. 
And the story focus for that area is really about the origins and evolutions of modern day pharmaceutical sciences. Where have we come from? Where are we going? Um, the field is, is a dynamic and ever-changing one, and it's been really amazing um, for me as a layperson to look back on the history and see how pharmaceutical sciences has really been on the cutting edge of every step along the way in history. So we can go to the next slide here and show you we can. So the idea is that within this space there are some very tall columns and we're going to include uh, graphic uh, storytelling panels that explore some of the big eras in pharmaceutical history through natural origins to more traditional pharmacy and then on to the, really about the innovation of the industry and where it's going now and how manufacturing and computer age have affected um, this discipline and uh, been able to change it and evolve it as it's moved forward. One of the central pieces for this feature will be um, an artifact uh, display case. The design of this is still being developed a little bit, but the idea is that as you walk into the central space, you see large impact graphic pieces that communicate this idea of a change through time and that you can walk around and explore this artifact display case and get a sense of the tools of the trade from different periods throughout history. So we think this is going to be an interesting piece that will explore, uh, um, give emphasis to physical exploration. The idea is that the, the drawers will pull out, you can look inside to see some uh, interpretive storytelling <coughs> about the different pieces and learn and understand what some of the different um, tools were used for uh, and in what context. So this definitely in integrated some seating and uh, more of a lounge feel in this space will be a more quieter place to rest and learn about where have we come from. So the second piece we want to talk about is donor recognition. For us, it's really a really important celebration of the support from the community for the faculty and for the building. So our mission has been to design donor recognition pieces that beyond recognizing those important contributions, provide another layer of public art and excitement that educate and inform and inspire the people visiting the space. So we have some interesting ideas on how to do that. This piece is meant for uh, lifetime donor recognition. And the idea is that against this black glass wall, you would have um, a, a tensile cable type of sculpture piece that's a little bit reminiscent of those systems of the body we were talking about, the, uh, the vascular system or the neurons in the brain stretching up to the ceiling. And then on each of the strands would be um, glass or resin cubes that contain microscopic textures of medicines. So the, each cube would feature a donor name on it, and uh, that represents the medicines traveling through the body system, supporting it and bringing that vitality and wellness to the whole being. Um, the, the photographic textures are going to be quite beautiful in abstraction like that, and you'll be able to walk up and physically turn the cubes and explore and play, giving um, more exploration and more physical interactions. When you walk up to it, it's not a, a static piece, but rather something that you can play with and explore and, and learn and engage with. The second piece we are, we're designing, I don't have a visual for you today, but we're um, We've got a very exciting molecular inspired sculpture planned for our campaign donor giving that would dwell within the main atrium space. And the concept with that is to take a, a parallel to the building design of the two trees and show two um, taxol molecules uh, as a three dimensional sculpture piece that is beautiful and uh, contains the donor names and is another piece that you can uh, physically explore and interact with in space. So again, the idea with the donor recognition is to add another layer of public art that is a beautiful way to celebrate our donors and that commitment the community has made, but also to um, add another layer of education and learning into the space. So 
In the heart of the atrium, we've planned a really exciting feature. This is what we're calling the impact video wall. <laughs> um, next slide here. Great. So this is a large scale uh, video wall with a, a motion background. So it would uh, be a softly moving background image of inside the body. And then and the other layer on top of it would be uh, molecular shapes growing and creeping in from the sides to fill in uh, what we're calling factoid bubbles. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the, the stories inside the factoids? Sure. Uh, the idea with this media wall is that it's nine feet by 30 feet wide. So it's, it's a very large piece and, and we want to create visual interest from really far away. So that's what the idea of the changing colors and, and scientific inspired video backgrounds. But then when people are drawn further into the atrium and walk close to the, this media wall, they have an opportunity to learn and also be hooked further into that story. So they are encouraged and driven upstairs to the mezzanine to explore further with the in-depth stories that are told through technology. The idea with the factoids was that they show the impact of pharmacy across many different subjects. So it's an opportunity to show the impact um, econ in economic ways, to um, educate the public about facts about the drug development process, about the relevance of um, pharmaceutical sciences to everyday life. So there's a real flexibility and opportunity with these factoids to encourage uh, people to get interested, uh, to learn more, and then to explore further within this story of medicines upstairs. Mm -hmm. An exciting part of this feature is that um, the content of it, the written factoids, are completely driven by the faculty. So they'll be able to update all of the information from day to day if they choose to, and as well we'll be able to filter some of the content so that if we have a particular event happening within the space or if we want to honor a particular um, theme or, or season, for instance, a diabetes awareness, um, we can program the factoids to be relevant to that particular key phrase or key word so that if there's an alumni event, for instance, this whole piece can be filtered to focus specifically on alumni-related facts. So that makes it a highly flexible feature within the space that can always be updated it's always going to be fresh, it's always going to be relevant, and we can keep the impact in that way. Every time a new visitor comes to the space, they'll be able to see and learn something new. And as they stand there, they, the different bubbles of the factoids will appear at random throughout that, that media wall, so it will look visually interesting and different every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, well, those of us sitting at the back and can't really see, can you read out one of them? Sure, I can read out um, each of those examples. So the first one in the upper left-hand corner here says, the Center for Drug Research and Development was formed to transform promising health research discoveries into new therapies for patients. Another one is, uh, did you know that before the discovery of insulin, diabetes was considered a death sentence? So as you see, this format, about 140 characters is what we're thinking. Just something to really uh, provoke people into thinking about a topic not to deal with that topic in an in-depth way, but to serve up little facts that get people thinking, get people interested, and get them to explore further. But it really can showcase um, the breadth of information about pharmaceutical sciences, many different topics, and as Gemma mentioned, very uh, time relevant because of this flexibility with a content management system that can be very uh, time-based mm -hmm. for publishing these factoids. Yes. So I think um, what we've been talking about is Jimmy is the content champion for this particular feature. He'll be the man um, running the content management system, so everybody be nice to Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> you never know who, what he'll put up there. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so within the atrium space, we feel like this piece, the scale of it is going to be a huge draw to bring visitors in from those front doors, from that front lobby, into the heart of the atrium where there's more space to dwell and explore and uh, linger within this space and engage with this feature. It's going to be very exciting. Okay. So last but not least, a lot of the digital interactive stories are in the space we're calling the Mezzanine Interactive Zone. 
Uh, this area is above the small lecture theater, so you'd enter um, the stairs here or up the elevator into this. Um, it's kind of a half level in between the classrooms and the main atrium space, and uh, many of the stories are contained within it. And this, if you go back, oh, sorry, this wall along here is a half wall looking out over the atrium, mm -hmm. whereas the rest of the space is a closed in area at the back, but this is something that's open to the atrium. Yeah, so from the atrium floor, you'll be able to see um, some exciting things happening within the mezzanine, and from the mezzanine, you'll be able to see the rest of the atrium space as well. If I might, it's probably worthy here because this is probably the best uh, image to go ahead and look at. The ability to hold very large events in the building is predicated on the way this is designed. And what you have is not only the big hall that you see, but you have multiple layers, and that's why a number of the ramps and those sorts of things are in there. So the ability to do everything from our white coat ceremony to start having all sorts of different events, and I've been talking to all sorts of people from not only our colleagues at CDRD about starting to do some programs together and bring groups into the building, but I've talked to a number of different stakeholder groups, and that's, that's uh, uh, the profession, that's I've talked to uh, uh, the government and things about starting to have build or meetings in the building to use those resources to come in. And imagine then how you can start having everything from this this big impact wall and start encouraging people to go ahead and look into the area where we're going to have the touch screens and everything and follow the stories. It should be exciting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So this is a view of the, the interactive zone within the mezzanine. The overall idea is, is that this would be a more dramatic, uh, more intimate space to explore a deeper dive into some of the storytelling elements. This will feature many different kinds of uh, interactive storytelling on large touch screens and touch tables. And um, the flow of the room has been designed so that it's almost a semi-private type of learning experience where you don't have a huge crowd or a huge space behind you watching what you're doing, um, but rather you can get right up close and personal with the technology and feel comfortable really exploring that and spending some time learning and, and um, exploring that, that technology. So uh, the idea is that we treat the back wall here with some static environmental <coughs> graphics that introduce some of the stories, some high impact uh, light boxes that give a quick glance of imagery related to it, and integrate that all the way along this space in this exhibit path with the interactive technology so that there's many different places to stop and dwell, to explore the storytelling and learn more. So Jessica can tell us a bit more about some of the stories in here going on the interactive technology. Sure, if we could just hop back one screen to look at the floor plan again, I can outline where the specific pieces are going. Along the back wall of the mezzanine, there are two uh, flat areas that you see in the, in the floor plan. Each of those will be a large scale touch wall. Uh, and when I say large, I mean five feet high by six and a half feet wide touch screen. Uh, they'll be telling uh, two different stories. The one on the left side, when you first come up and start your experience here, will be the journey of a drug, which I'll speak more about in a minute. Uh, and the next one over here will be speaking about the role of pharmacy. The other pieces which we'll speak to individually, in the middle, uh, around the column, there will be a 55 inch uh, touch table that's uh, angled down and allows multiple people to gather around and explore uh, the life of a drug and the six drugs that change the world. The element here is a non-interactive piece about the, uh, the Pledge of Professionalism, which we'll come to again later. And on this side is a 46-inch touchscreen built into the uh, architectural wood wall uh, that allows people to explore the alumni story through a touchscreen experience. Mm -hmm. So I'll speak to each of those now if we want to move forward to the artistic view. The first story specifically is the journey of a drug through the body. And this one is really to capture people's imaginations and uh, really engage their natural curiosity about how drugs work in their bodies. The way that the experience is planned out, that when you walk up to the screen, you, have, you would have an opportunity to select a um, body type that fits uh, you so you can personalize your experience. So you could choose from a male or a female, a, a child or an adult. Then you could select the drug that you're interested in exploring and the delivery method that goes along with that with that drug. Once you've made those choices, 
then the interactive experience uh, shows how that drug travels through your body and animates the effects of it going through, um, going, you know, if you swallow the pill, going through your stomach, being absorbed into your bloodstream, and then traveling to the point where it works and makes the pain go away, for example. So this will be a very dynamic and interactive experience where for you know, young children coming as part of school groups to uh, the full demographic for this, uh, this audience uh, will be engaged in learning through this, this experience and, uh, and have a fun time uh, understanding better how drugs work. Mm -hmm. The scale of this piece uh, in relation to walking up to a touch wall and exploring it, um, the size of the touch screen is going to allow us to make this feature pretty close to life size so that when you walk up to it, you're interacting with like a mirror image of yourself, so to speak, and uh, applying to that body drugs that, medicines that may be things that you take in your everyday life or have experience with. So you can really get a deep dive view of what's happening when I take um, an ibuprofen. What's happening if I take my insulin? Um, what happens within my body? And it'll be virtually life-size, so we think that's going to be a very exciting and dynamic experience for uh, all of the demographics we're targeting with this is. And we do have a short list of drugs to feature uh, to show the variety in delivery methods as well as um, how the drugs act on the body. The short list includes um, antihistamines, antidepressant, asthma puffers, anti antibiotics, statins, ibuprofen, and the birth control pill. And I've been working closely with Kathleen McLeod, as well as her subgroup of helpers that I know includes Wayne Riggs and Urs Hafferly. And we've been working to take it from this initial concept and develop that content so that the interactive experience is very accurate and engaging and tells an authentic story. Nope. Sorry, just catching my breath for a minute. <laughs> On the second touch screen along the back wall uh, will be a, a similar scale of interactive, again, five and a half feet by six and a half feet wide. And on this one, it will be quite a different style of story. While the journey of a drug is very uh, scientific uh, focused about the, the drug and the, and the travel through the body, the role of pharmacy is really about the people within pharmacy and how important their roles are in society and how um, varied they are within the pharmaceutical sciences. So the way that we'll be telling this story is again a life-size uh, interactive experience where uh, you'll be able to select from featured personas uh, who represent the different roles within pharmacy. So it will be a very personalized story that I will be able to view um, an individual uh, from a community pharmacist or somebody from the industry or somebody who, whose focus is on academia or on research and then view the connection points between that role and other roles within, within the pharmaceutical sciences. So it not only allows people to personalize that experience where they can select someone they're interested in learning about, but they can understand how that person that persona is connected to everyone else within this story. What's really exciting about that is, um, as the Dean was saying, one of the, the big things that came up from all the stakeholder groups that he's been talking to, that we've been talking to, is the idea is that the greater public doesn't have a very accurate view of what this industry, what this field is all about. What is What are we doing? Um, so through this story feature, we can really show all the potential different career paths and opportunities for people involved in pharmaceutical sciences and involved with this faculty to move forward as, as far as recruiting potential students and uh, catering to those, uh, those school groups and high school groups and potential uh, new students coming in. I think it's going to be a really exciting and dynamic way to explore all of the variety of roles that you have the potential for from this faculty as a platform. And with this story, there is an opportunity to show a bit of the evolution of how pharmacy has changed over time as well, that, that most of the personas featured would be uh, modern day, but we have talked about the possibility to feature uh, a pharmacist of old and a pharmacist of the future to really um, engage people's uh, curiosity and imaginations about what that um, pharmacist is and what the, the pharmaceutical sciences look like in the future. So it really is an opportunity for people to get interested about this field and then through the technology, they can have that deeper dive for information. And if they are still uh, interested to learn more, 
we have also talked about an opportunity to um, allow people to jump off into uh, their mobile phones, uh, learn more from websites about uh, if there is a researcher, for, for example, that you could feature, go to this website where you can learn about their research. And you could feature faculty tie-ins as well. Now coming to the uh, table in the middle of the experience, uh, arranged around this central column, this is the opportunity to tell the life of a drug and the six drugs that change the world. And really when I say the life of a drug, it is that drug development uh, process that needs to be highlighted to show the innovation uh, that goes on as part of that drug development process and the challenges that uh, researchers are, are up against when they are developing drugs but to tell it in a few different ways. So one way will be to tell a general interactive story of what is this life of a drug, how are drugs developed, but then the other view of it will be told through the lens of six different featured drugs. And the opportunity here is to give people a case-by-case -case approach so that it's not just a theoretical explanation of, well, th these are the general steps that you go through and here are some potential challenges, but it really gives you some examples that you can take away as a, as a real uh, learning opportunity. And I can just bring up some of the ones that we were planning on featuring. So working with uh, Brian Rodriguez, as well as a subcommittee team of Barry G of the CDRD, uh, Simon Alvin, uh, Judy Wong, and Adam Frankel, we have a short list of drugs to feature, including anesthetics, antibiotics, birth control pill, <coughs> statins, analgesics, and insulin. So this story that will be told for each of those, uh, those drugs would include the historical perspective that would give a context for why that drug was, was necessary, and then it will give the history of the drug itself. And then from the history, you'd be able to develop then uh, what is the current um, use of that drug, and opp opportunities and challenges there, and then also show potential new uses and, and future innovations for that drug. And with each of these examples, we'll be able to really bring the focus onto that drug development process. The idea of the amount of years and millions or billions of dollars and thousands to tens of thousands of compounds required to really take that from the initial idea of investigating an illness and working towards uh, a treatment or a prevention um, method and what it takes to really get that onto the shelves and and with the community in order to really focus on that healthcare. So through each of those stories, we'll really be bringing into focus what that process looks like and through the hook of the different drugs selected so that we're looking at the process through the lens of an impactful example. Great. And the next one to speak about is the alumni story, which will be told through a touch screen on this other wall over here, a little bit separate from the scientific story on the, on the left side. And the alumni interactive story would be essentially a digital yearbook that would allow people to explore not only what would be the equivalent of the class composite photos that you would see on the walls of, of the, the building as it is now, but to take that to a, a different experience of being able to explore, uh, be able to search on people, be able to look up and find a, base, a basic profile, and then if alumni have provided um, their additional information and consented to do that, we could feature uh, a more advanced profile that would facilitate networking amongst alumni, as well as, if you would imagine being a student going to the school now, seeing what some of those potential career paths are, that you could look up people with a certain degree, see what they're doing now. So this would be an opportunity to learn about the alumni more than simply seeing a photo on the wall. Yeah, I think that this alumni feature is going to be a really interesting way to again highlight that question of what do we do uh, with those expanded profiles as the users provide that information. You'll be able to see pharmaceutical families, for instance, who have generations of pharmacists who have gone to this faculty who practice in this industry. You'll be able to see where people have gone within their career paths and really illustrate the variety of opportunities that there are for graduates of this faculty. So I think it'll be a really dynamic tool. Mm -hmm. I've been working closely with Jamal Kurtu and Ardi Maharaj 
to uh, define what the properties are for that base profile so that with the base profile information there would not be any privacy concerns. We would be sharing the information that's currently available through a composite class photo that would appear on the halls of the, the current school and then uh, to uh, put out that ask to alumni members whether they would be willing to share an additional level of information to be a, a further part of this interactive story. Mm -hmm. And with that, some of the, the most historical groups of alumni are not going to be all that excited to participate, but with each new uh, year, with each new class, with each new cohort that is begun, this interactive and digital technology is really a part of their way of life right now. And I think that um, as we progress and move forward, there are going to be more and more students who do choose to opt in because they're very proud of being involved with the faculty and going to school here. They're going to want to share that. And there will be an opportunity to highlight uh, alumni who are also donors. Uh, there, there will be many ways to uh, engage people to learn more about these alumni, whether it's by looking by year or by who, has, who is also a building donor by what their current career uh, is. Mm -hmm. The piece in the middle here, um, this Pledge of Professionalism, this is the existing Pledge of Professionalism that each new student uh, commits to as they, as they enter the faculty. Um, right now it's being, it's large scale poster boards that the students all sign. And we've got a vision for really making this a permanent feature within the space to really bring home that message, that commitment to quality, that commitment to excellence in healthcare. Um, so the idea is to create a feature wall that has the language of the pledge written um, right along the main circulation path here, which is where all the students will travel through to get to their classes. So every day they see that promise, every day it's a reminder of their commitment. And within a, a custom plinth or table there would be um, a, a book that would capture all of the signatures for each year. So. As you, each, each student walks past, they're reminded of the commitment that they made, and they can browse past years of uh, student signatures and see who all came before that committed to that same pledge of professionalism. Mm -hmm. We think it's going to be a really exciting way to make that tangible for each individual that's going through, positioned in between that role of pharmacy feature, the alumni feature, the, the reminder of that pledge is going to be um, a daily part of the experience for the students walking through, which is really exciting to If we could go back to the previous um, slide for one minute. Um, one thing to mention, um, on the back of this column, we have a touch table here for the life of a drug, the six drugs that change the world. And on the back side, built into the column, will be a, an e-postcard terminal that will allow visitors to take photos of themselves and send it to friends and family as an e-postcard uh, through their email. Um, and they, the, the purpose of this e-postcard is to really allow the visitors to this centre to generate some buzz uh, and get, get people to know about this centre as a destination. Because our understanding is that it is something which will not just serve the people who we would expect to come to this building, but it would serve a broader audience of uh, families and school groups. And getting that word out to the public, uh, we can uh, leverage the people who come there uh, to help get that word out. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a really fun interactive tool. The way it works is there's a camera positioned above a touch screen, and you walk up to it and choose a postcard background that could be of the, the render of the faculty building, images from the faculty or from CDRD, and then they're able to take their own picture within the Story of Medicine's exhibit space and send it out to Facebook and Twitter and really tell all their friends, wow, look at this exciting experience. You've got to come down here or as we've seen some of the, the new students as they're accepted really uh, have a, a buzz online about being accepted. Some of the chat boards are so exciting to see the results from the students when they get their acceptance uh, notifications. They can come down and send an e-postcard to mom and dad. Guess huh? what, I got in. <laughs> so <laughs> it's gonna be a really exciting way to engage beyond this exciting experience and out into the world so that we can really communicate what's going on here really play into making this a destination that people can come down and, and explore again to, uh, to be educated, to learn, to, to explore that, and to be really be made aware of the innovation that's part of the faculty here. And as Gemma mentioned, you can 
can show these ethos cards via social media. And the beauty of that is not only are they they're from the first person who takes that photo and shares it through social media, that yes, you get the people uh, viewing it and, and receiving that, but then the people who, who receive it can also further share it. So again, it does get that message out there quite effectively. We want story of medicines to go viral. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so that's what we have to show you today. Um, we're really excited to answer questions and comments and talk to you more. Um, did you want to uh, yeah, just take just several you? things maybe to kind of wrap that up? And the only reason I'll come back here is they are recording that for those that couldn't come, and we'll go ahead and we're working out putting it up on the web page. So if you start to think about this, what I want you to do is think about it in the bigger picture of where it can go. There'll be a set of pieces that we'll put together so that when that new building opens up in uh, August, September of uh, 2012, we have it. What we're hoping for is the following, that what will happen is we'll start adding layers to it. So in other words, imagine as you started to look at this, you had the ability to go ahead and look at things that we now start putting into files that you really have your own will to go in. Just as people get lost when they start getting onto the internet and going around, imagine doing that around medicines and drugs and pharmacy and the pharmaceutical sciences, being able to do that. Uh, Gemma and Jessica talked about, uh, we're looking at ways to allow people to connect with your smartphone or your PDF so that you can suddenly go ahead and do things, maybe download files, look at things like that around information. The ability that we could go ahead around special events, whether it's things that we as a university have, like celebrate research or celebrate learning, or maybe it's Diabetes Awareness Week, or maybe it's this or it's that, and we can go ahead and start doing a set of things around that. We're starting to go out now, as we've always offered to any high school in the province, that if they wanted a faculty member to come, we'd arrange to have somebody come out and talk about health and wellness and the role of pharmacy and so on is starting to talk to them about the fact that this is a great place to bring your, your students, a great place to come. We've been talking to the broader stakeholder group about what a great place to come in and to do this. And imagine our students being really immersed in many, in many ways their informal learning spaces are now things in which, just in the way we, you know, students do it now, they use these devices to learn and to communicate, to be able to do that. It's, there's a mechanism set up so that we can interact with alumni in a far different way than we ever had before. And try to get alumni to tell their story about what they're doing with their education and have that be a real role model in many ways, even if it's somewhat of an e role model for our students. And imagine if throughout that building, throughout basically what we do, we start creating an environment that is a wonderful one to talk about those big issues that we're dealing with, such as sustainability within the healthcare system, or big issues that affect the quality of medication uh, use and optimal use of drugs like adherence and things like that. What we can take on is things that we never could have in an easy way, but we can do it in a concerted way and bring real academic rigor and energy and evidence and all that to it. Uh, even the kiosk concept is to get people to come into the building, take a look at this, and start to communicate and start to interact. And so we think that's an exciting part. What I wanted to do is I wanted to especially thank Artie and Jimmy for their role in helping to set up today. And we appreciate that very, very much. I want to thank all of you that came from the faculty as part of the normal uh, process that our consultants would inform you. But I'd also like to thank our CDRD colleagues and our stakeholders that have come. We appreciate that very much. But I think the real key is, is think about it and imagine what this can be. And we've only scratched the surface of where I think this can end up going. It's an exciting time for the faculty. I hope you enjoyed it. Would all the members of the committee stand up for a moment, please? Okay. Thank all of you for the role you play. And everybody has an ask me button. So if you want to talk to people about particular aspects of this, by all means, ask them, OK? And thank you very, very much for coming. Appreciate it very much. Thank you.